Okay. So, I want to talk about higher education. And uh, to begin the discussion, I want to talk a little bit about my experience with higher education. So, uh, I, I, I finished college about six months ago. Um, roughly, I'm not sure exactly. Um, or I, I mean, I could I could find out exactly when, but I don't I don't care to, to look it up right now. Um, the point is, I finished recently, and uh, it was after having spent uh, over seven years. Uh, but I graduated with a bachelor's degree in computer science and a bachelor's degree in math. And, uh, and after doing that, I was able to, to get a job. And so, hooray, I'm employed. That was originally my intent um, when, when starting this whole process. Um, but my perspective has changed a lot over those seven years, particularly my perspective on higher education. So, um, when, I, when I first began, um, I was just delighted to be in college in the first place. Uh, it, in my family and most of the people I know, the impression is that, well, if you have the means, you should, you should send your kid to, to college. Um, if you have the means, then they have the desire or the aptitude. Um, and so, so yeah, so the impression is that everyone should 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 go to college if they can, essentially. Um, and and so I was just delighted to 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 be in in college when when I first started. But that started to change gradually. Um, Towards the the towards the end of the the first half of my career, I started at community college. I, I then transferred to a to a four year college. I say four year because it took me a lot longer than four years, obviously. Um, so towards the end of my time at community college, um, my perspective started to shift a little bit because, um, well. Admittedly, I had spent a lot of time doing things like general education classes. Um, and so it was kind of annoying to, to find out that, hey, after spending all this time, you still really haven't learned any marketable skills. Um, although that's not necessarily the way that you have to navigate your way through the required courses, okay? But that's just the feeling I was starting to get. And then, uh, there's sort of been this growing idea that, uh, at least in the field of computer science, you don't necessarily have to have the degree to get the job. Um, and I think it was because of some high, some high profile, some big companies um, hired some people that didn't necessarily have the, the qualifications that people expect you to have. Um, but in general, I can't say whether whether it's true that there's this growing trend. Um, it's just an impression I have. I haven't like seen the statistics. Um, uh, so, so I was sort of bearing that as I went into, uh, went into the, the four year university, but uh, you know, that didn't stop me obviously from pursuing the, the two degrees. Um, but then another thing occurred to me, and it was that um, the more I learned about what people actually do um, in the field of programming, like commercial programming and software development, which is where I've ultimately ended up, um, the more I learned about that, the more I started to get concerned that what I was learning didn't have a one-to-one -one correspondence, correspondence to be between skills I needed to be good at the job I would hopefully eventually have. Um, and then that became 
um, obvious and certain to me after I finished my internship. Um, because I was fortunate enough to have to, to, to do an internship. Um, it was something like one or two semesters before before graduating. Um, and now that I've been a, a software developer at uh, at like an actual company for for a few months now. Um, nothing has really changed. I, I'm, I am certain that there's not a one-to-one -one correspondence. Now, the lack of a one-to-one -one correspondence doesn't mean that college is, is you know, just wrong and nobody should, should do it, right? Um, it's, it's sort of a, I think it's worthwhile to sort of start from the consideration of like, what, what is the purpose of college, right? Okay. And, and sort of what, what do colleges do to provide value? You know, what are you, what exactly are you paying for and why are you paying for it? Okay. And these are the kinds of things that I've been thinking about. Um, so, um, for most people, I think it's evident that the purpose of college is, is to, to get a job. Now, not everyone goes to college for that purpose, um, but I think the majority of people do, and it's not necessarily the overwhelming majority, um, but I think that's the, that group of people is kind of the most important, well, it's, it's at least the most important demographic to focus on for me because I, I was one of them, okay, so. Um, so let's consider it from the perspective of a person who's going to college to get to get a job, right? Okay. So um, the the purpose of the college is to educate you, right? Okay. So what does it mean to to be educated? Um, and that's something that I've heard a variety of opinions on from both students and professors. Um, so. And now, ultimately, the people I work with. Um, so I think the most convincing argument is that uh, college is is a is a superset of the basics that you need. Um, so what do I mean by that? I mean that you learn the enough basics and it's kind of arbitrary what's defined as basics but it's um it's it's essentially you're covering a lot of of breadth so in your education so that um you can have a lot uh, a, a longer career you could be more useful and more uh, a more versatile employee to your future employer, right? So it's more breadth rather than depth. Um, and, and of course there's, um, it's not just one or the other, right? It's, it's, um, it's, it's a, it's a matter of degrees, you know, like, to what degree do you want breadth? To what degree do you want depth? And colleges have um, embodied in their curriculum a particular um, amount of breadth versus depth, although um, it is somewhat flexible because there are electives, right? So we have to acknowledge that it's, it's, um, it's, uh, College gives you a range of uh, on this like spectrum of 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 depth, um, but I would argue that like it on on the whole scale of all breadth to all depth, right? College is much closer on the breadth side. Okay. Um, 
And you, you also get breadth of things that are not inherently related to your future career as well, right? So, um, let's see. What's like the least useful thing that I could say I learned, right? Um, well, I didn't particularly enjoy learning about history, right? Okay, so, yeah, I think you could argue that although learning about history might make you um, uh, a good citizen or an interesting person, it's not something that's going to enhance your career. Um, unless you happen to be working for like a deeply global company and your job directly involves interacting with people of different nationalities. Um, and you happen to take, you happen to have taken a history course that was like world history rather than, um, in my case, United States history. Um, so that's like a, a, you know, a very small, a very minute group of people uh, for which uh, the history class would be would be ideal for them. Um, and then, I mean, like in English and writing, like. It, admittedly, you need to be able to speak and communicate, write, write, eh, well, yeah, I mean, we do quite a bit of writing. Um, and let's see, what else? I mean, math, well, I mean, I got a math degree mostly because I was, I was interested in math not necessarily because I had a particular uh, job in mind, like a, I didn't have a particular job description in mind that I was setting myself up for. Um, but basically all this, I think, revolves around the problem of when you're in college, you don't, you don't always have the, the, the particular job you're going after in mind because you you sort of have faith that if you're pursuing a subject that is that is difficult that's like a, a subject that that you think smart people are doing and, and it's a subject that is in the ballpark of, of the career that you're interested in you you kind of assume that, that it will eventually benefit you in your career, right? So that's, I think that's what ultimately, um, like combined with my interest in math, it's what, it's what I thought, it's, it's what permitted me to, to think it was a good idea or a reasonable idea to also get a math degree uh, along with the computer science degree. Even though now I, I, I know with certainty that like half of my math degree is completely useless in um, in my in my current uh, in my current role, I would say. Now that doesn't mean that I can't eventually turn that into something useful later on in my career. But that's like how how far along in the future um, are we going to look and still give credit to? the college, you know? Um, so these, these are, these are the things that, that concern me now. Um, so, so colleges are not good at, at matching, um, classes to, um, job descriptions. Uh, at least that's that's my impression. Now, if you're if you'd be willing to accept that that's the case, um, and admittedly it's it's a hard sell, but maybe I'll, I'll massage that topic a little bit more, right? So like if if universities because because I would think like if I were running a university right um, 
knowing that the majority of the of my yeah. my students, uh, the majority of my customers are are there to to get the degree to get the job, right? Um, and in, and in fact, um, we know that well at least okay at my college, right? Um, it's and I think it's common across all colleges is that when you see th there's a lot of information that they try to sell you about like hey here's this degree and here's a list of careers that make use of this degree so it's not like they're it's not like I'm trying to get them to sell a product that they don't sell or provide a service that they don't provide like colleges are geared towards careers um, even if it's not a um, vocational school um, so if, if they don't actually provide, if they're not very good at providing one-to-one -one correspondence between your work or your, your classes and your, your role, your job description, uh, what, are, what are they doing? Like what's, what is the cause that is, has resulted in the curriculum that I've seen? Um, and I think what it is, is um, they, they do take into account employers. Um, uh, they, they have some mechanism of getting the input of employers. Now, I don't know what that mechanism is, and I don't know what weight that mechanism is, how much weight that mechanism is given um, in the determination of the curriculum. Uh, because uh, either of those two things could result in in this this mismatch. Um, I and, and in fact, my suspicion is that the the problem is is both. Um, I think that um, the mechanism is probably wrong because they probably don't they probably don't survey employers or get imp the opinions of employers in a neutral or intelligent way. Um, so if we, if you just considered it as um, sort of a data, data mining problem, then my approach would be like, well, let's get, let's get all of the, um, let's get uh, all of the, what are they called? Job description. Let's get all the job postings, right? And perhaps let's, let's make it uh, all the job postings within a certain period of time that's like, not too recent, you know, because you want it to, you don't want it to, to change too dramatically with current trends, right? But maybe like within the past four years or the past six, 10, I don't know how many years. Um, and you, you, you pick out job titles that you're targeting, right? Okay, so you, you survey all that, you, you collect up all the data and you look at the, what are the sort of average or the most common, um, skills right and and so i haven't done that i don't know how useful that would be but that would be my approach and i i tend to think that that would prove prove more useful now there's a chance that that's not the case there's a chance that job descriptions are just kind of kind of terrible and, and not specific enough which i think is is also partially true right but there's a number of ways that they could get input from employers and i i, I definitely don't think they're doing it, doing that right um, and then as far as the amount of weight they're giving it, well, if they're not giving weight, if they're not using, um, what employers think to determine the curriculum, what else are they using? What is the other input into that system? Well, I think the other input into that system is, uh, well, what other customers are colleges serving with their degrees? Well, uh, they're serving future master's degree or PhD, depending on the university. Some universities don't offer those higher degrees, right? But in, in, in my case, ultimately, the, they did offer master's and I think PhDs in computer science and certainly, uh, well, do they have PhDs in math? Yeah, I think they, they offer PhDs in math, uh, certainly master's degrees in math. Um, but that's like another thing that they're targeting at the same time when they're building these degrees. And those are two completely different uh, targets. Those are two completely different sets of people. Um, because I, I know, and 
when did I know this? I knew this maybe after a couple of semesters at the university, I, I had decided that no, my goal is to go into industry. I do not want to stay in college for another seven years or however long it would have taken me to get like a PhD or wh wherever I was going to go. Um, but, uh, shoot, what was I saying? They're, they're different people, right? And yeah, okay, so I said that. I'm, I'm certainly not that kind of person. Um, so, yeah, the, the, a master's degree is, uh, well, what do you do when you get a master's degree and you get a PhD? Well, you, you, you don't work on the same problems. You, you ultimately, you're, you're writing papers about research topics and you're, uh, ult uh, most of the time you actually have to teach people too, which is uh, arguably not ideal as well, but I'll make that argument at another time. Um, so, and, and so I know that these problems are different because I, I actually, I've been working at a company now for a few months and, and it's very clear to me that the, the goal when you're working, when you're a software developer at a company, your goal is not solving new problems. Your goal is in fact solving problems that have been solved a long time ago and and you're you're rewriting the solutions to these problems in the most quick and uh, efficient way, but it's a different kind of efficiency. You're not trying to write the code that executes most quickly. Um, you're looking for more aesthetic qualities um, and also more practical qualities. You want your code to you, you need to be able to test it to make sure that it's not broken. Um, and usually performance is like the last consideration on a, on a long list of other considerations. Like you need to, your entire team needs to be able to, um, operate this code and use it to, to serve customers needs and keep this code up and running for a long period of time. That is a completely different set of tasks to someone who's going to write a research paper uh, that like provably solves a problem in the quickest way pro po uh, possible. Um, in, in fact, a lot of the times you, you, you wouldn't even need to have to write the, the actual code for it. You could just write like the sketch of an algorithm for it. The, 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 the standards and the, the skills are completely different. And that's not to say that there's anything inherently wrong with being uh, an academic or a person that's researching computer science topics. It's just that they, they, they're, they're very different. And in a lot of cases, they're the things that you learn are sort of opposed to, to each other. You can't, um, they're, well, they're opposed to each other in the sense that in order to learn how to be a good commercial software developer, it's a different it's different classes, it's different work. And that's not to say that you can't learn both, but it is, if you have a limited period of time, you certainly can't learn both. Um, and, and not only that, of course, the people that are deciding the curriculum are not necessarily the people who have, you know, spent years doing software development for, for some company. Uh, they're most of the time people that have like, have PhDs, and in fact, of course, the people that the people that are teaching you, um, well, if you're there's this at least at my school, um, if you're going to be teaching a, a class that's for a bachelor's degree students, um, like a not like an upper level class, but like a, a middle level class, not like an, an incredibly basic class, you need to have a PhD to be able to be to be allowed to teach that class. Um, so that essentially means that you're learning from people that are, that are multiple years um, divergent from, from what you want to do, right? Like for you to become the person who's teaching you, you would have to spend um, probably, I, I say four years because like a master's degree is, is it like, 
around two years, probably more. And then a PhD is another two years, probably, right? So for you to become the person who's teaching you, it would take four years of work in like, I don't want to say the opposite direction, but like a completely different direction from where you're going if you're pursuing a career. Um, and that distance um, impacts the curriculum and it impacts also the quality of teaching and like the, the focus of the teaching that you're receiving, I would argue, as well, because there's some... There's some freedom, the, the teachers have some freedom in interpreting the curriculum and, and sort of, they, they put their own spin on it a little bit, but inevitably the spin is not going to be focused on um, people that want to become software developers, uh, with exception to, I don't even, I don't even want to say with exception to a couple courses, because there's not even a single course, I would say, that's like entirely focused on, on on just applications there there were none like that but there are maybe one or two lessons uh lectures that had some subtopics that were especially focused on uh how things actually are in the commercial world and in, in like actual software development and then in math don't get, don't even get me started on math there's like Nobody cares about practicality when you're talking about math, at least, uh, at least not in the upper level math classes when you're dealing exclusively with, with proofs. Um, I've written precisely zero proofs in my work. And I mean, it's not like I expected any different. I at least knew that much, um, by the time I was deciding to do a math degree. Um, although I, you know, I did like idly hope that I might end up somewhere where I'd be doing like research or something that was combining these two things, um, at least when I first started the math degree, but that's neither here nor there. Um, so that's essentially all I have to say on that topic. There's, there's, there's a, there's a disconnect and, uh, and I've experienced it and it's inherent to the design of higher education. As far as I can tell, it's like inherent to the process of the curriculum and the people that are involved in it. And so to circle back to how it affected me um, and how I saw it affected the other people around me, um, you, you, you encounter, hold on one second. Okay, good. Just want to make sure I was still recording. So you, you encounter at, at some, and I feel like practically everyone, like the majority of people, at least that I've known in college, reach some point in their college career where they encounter this, this like crisis of motivation, where it's, you, you know, it could, it could be brought on by a number of stresses, right? Because when you're in college, you have, uh, you know, despite what some people may think, there are still a lot of demands that can be placed on you. And, and sometimes things come out of nowhere to surprise you whether it be from the professors or you suddenly realize that, oh, I need to, I need to plan accordingly so that I can get this internship before I've graduated so that I can have better job prospects or something like that. Um, so sure, something's, something is going to bring it on, but I think like the ultimate cause of it is, is, is this uncertainty of motivation where, where people, they, they, they realize, they sort of become disillusioned um, as to the degree to which what they're learning about uh, will, will correlate to their job. Um, and, and I, I think, let's see, it's sort of two things at once, right? It's, it's a concern that they're not going to be prepared 
for the job interviews. They don't know whether they're going to be able to get the job. Um, because uh, I, and I can tell you in my case, there's, it's, it's not like every company in the world is going to be giving you offers. Um, I went through, I think like 12 interviews or so where I got turned down until I finally got the offer. Um, although, I mean, I got, let's see, most of those interviews were for the internship. I ended up returning to the company that I interned for. Um, but I, and I've heard from my friends that internship competition and regular job competition, there's not a huge difference. And perhaps there's even more competition for like regular jobs. Um, so there, that's one thing is that people are concerned that they're not going to be able to get the job. Okay. And then at the same time, and also related to that, they're, they're concerned that like, well, if that's the case, then what am I doing? What should I be doing? Um, because it, it's, it's a non-zero amount of work to be, a, to be a student. Um, you're, you're sitting through lectures, right? And that it's, it's quite difficult, um, for, I, I think no matter who you are, you need to pay attention for a long period of time and you need to be taking notes. You need to be actively engaged because these classes, these classes are not easy. Um, presumably you're in the class because you're, you need, you're learning new things. You don't already know all the things that are being gone over. Right. So, and if you're taking a full course load, it is, it ends up being roughly equivalent to, to, to a, a full-time job. Um, in some cases, and even if it's not a full-time job, like it, it 30 hours to, to 50 hours, like that's still in a range where it's a lot of work, right? And doing that much work can become incredibly stressful if you lose track of your motivation. Um, because you're not, <laughs> you're not getting paid to go to college. Um, in fact, just the opposite, you're paying a lot of money and certainly in my case, going into debt for the, for the privilege of doing all this work. And it's very easy to come to a point where you're, you're, you're just left thinking, you know, these like 1am thoughts or these shower thoughts. It's like, why, why am I here? Why, what exactly is the sequence of motivations that have led me to this point? And how, how confident am I at those on, on each of those links? Right. So for example, it's like, well, why am I taking, um, calculus two? Well, I'm taking calculus two because it's required for a computer science degree at this college. Okay. Well, why am I getting a computer science degree at this college? Well, because the other colleges didn't accept me, or this is the most convenient college. Why am I getting a computer science degree in the first place? Well, I'm getting a computer science degree because I, I feel like you need it to get a job. But then there's all this uncertainty. It's like, well, there, there's not a one-to-one -one correspondence between what you, what you learn and your eventual job. And you realize this as you get going, right? Because I, well, especially when you're taking math classes, it's, it's perfectly abundant that none of these equations that you're solving have anything to do with, with work in, in any sense. And in fact, your professors will tell you this. It's like, well, yeah, well, this particular equation, uh, well, actually what you're learning is, is not even close to the state of the art. And if you're an engineer or in any practical field, you're going to have computers to solve all these equations for you anyways. And then they just leave you hanging there as if they haven't said anything that that's, that's just crushed you and completely demoralized you. Um, so, so you, yeah, you inevitably get to this point where it's like, why, why am I doing this? And when that, that sort of foundation that's, that's keeping you going, when that foundation starts to shake, it, it becomes harder and harder to force yourself to, to keep going, to keep striving, to keep studying, to, to keep your grades up because, well, if there's no relation between what I'm doing and my eventual job, 
maybe all that matters is that I, I passed the class, you know, and then like, well, let me look at the syllabus to see how many tests do they drop? Um, you know, how, how well do I think I can, how, how little studying can I get away with? Uh, do I think I'm going to be able to copy off my, my neighbor during the tests, you know? Um, and then you spend your free time dealing with this crisis of motivation, dealing with the fact that you have to spend hours and hours working towards something that you're not even sure is going to provide you any value later on in life. And that, you know, you're, you're being saddled with this burden of debt, at least in most cases, if you're not fortunate enough to, to have financial aid completely cover it for you, or you have your parents pay for it. Um, or you're not, uh, you're not uh, working enough to, to pay for all of it at the same time. Um, and this, so this crisis of motivation that I'm, that I'm describing here is something that has affected me. Um, I've managed to get through it more or less unscathed. Um, although it's still something that is on my mind and it's something that's nagging at me, which is part of what's motivated me to make this video. It's like, why does this have to exist? Um, but also like, I can tell you, um, two of my close friends have, have had, uh, I don't know if I would call it like a, like, like a, like breakdowns or something, but, um, like cases where their, their psychological stability reached a sufficiently low point that it was affecting their their patterns of behavior. They were doing things that that they had never done before and they were like incredibly sad or um, just like in a state that um, that they felt they had to reach out to somebody for help. Um, and, uh, or like any, and like, there's any number of things that I've seen people do to try to, to try to deal with this, this crisis of, of motivation that I think is affecting people. Cause and, and I, and I want to point out that I think it's more than just teenagers and young people struggling to come to terms with being in a society and having responsibilities and things like that. Like, yes, admittedly, that is, that is going to be a part of anyone's experience when they're, when they're growing up and that they're, and when they're of college age, like that is certainly going to be a part of it. Um, but I've seen these kinds of things affect people, um, from a variety of age groups as well. Like the two instances I was talking about where they were, you know, particularly young, they were under 20 years old, but I've seen, um, um, there was this, there was this one older gentleman who was one of my classmates who, who at, at one point when the, when the professor wasn't there, like at the start of class, he, he like started like arguing like quite adamantly, like, well, like this, this is, this is too hard. Like, like this is incredibly difficult to learn. I don't know who wrote this, but why, why isn't it being taught better? And then like, why are we even doing this? Like what, like, how do we even know that this is going to be relating to what we eventually want to do? Like, how do I know this? And of course, nobody had an answer to this because there's at some point, everyone, everyone just comes to accept this actually, which I think is the saddest part. Um, all of like, either there's, there's people that are just silent, but they're like sobbing on the inside, or there's other people that have just become incredibly cynical about it. And they're just like, well, yeah, isn't that great? Isn't that <laughs> obvious? Like, obviously this has no relation to what we're going to be doing, but you just need the piece of paper. <laughs> And, uh, like to some extent, um, 
th that was me because that's that's how I tend to that's just like my sense of humor to some extent but at, at the same time um I when I got the chance when it was appropriate I, I talked about the fact that like well yes this is a problem and I don't think we can I don't think it's something that we can just flip a switch and solve at the end of the uh, um, you know, in a day or maybe not, and certainly not from the inside, it's not something that you can solve. Um, and it's not something that there's an obvious alternative for either, because the alternatives nowadays seem to be like, well, go read a book, perhaps which I think uh, has a lot of the same problems because like, although you do have an authority on the curriculum and with, with some work, you could assemble something like a curriculum. Um, there's, there is ultimately still going to be some question of how it relates to your, your, um, your eventual position. Um, un like there's just not that much information, um, easily available without doing some kind of enormous data mining project like I had described. Um, and by the way, I think it's reasonable for a college to pr pursue some, some kind of data mining project like that because that's, it's appropriate for them to pursue it because that's kind of their job. That's like, that's what they're selling you on. Um, so you might expect that they're the ones who are gonna have the most interest in pursuing that. Whereas an individual student um, especially one who's, say, for example, they just decided to, to quit college, like they're, they're going to be in a whole new world, like an endless set of possibilities. And they're probably just going to latch on to the quickest, easiest solution, like the first person that comes up to them and says and suggests that they have a solution to this, which I think is why we're at a stage right now where there's a lot of there's a lot of options, but they're, they don't solve all of the problems, right? They don't provide a complete solution. They still have a lot of the same traditions and um, methodologies of colleges where they'll probably, um, uh, it could be, they, they probably employ people that have, you know, college degrees and, and they have traditional lectures and, and you probably, um, the only thing that's really changed might be that there's lecture videos or that, um, that like a majority of the learning is done online, but it's still organized in the same basic structure and you still have textbooks that you have to find and buy. Um, there's a lot of solutions out there that, that I would argue don't go quite far enough in solving this problem of motivation. They, a lot of them still require you to trust them, trust that they know what the right curriculum for you, for, for some eventual job uh, is. Um, and and I, I, well, I think in a lot of cases, they're, they're gonna be more trustworthy um, because, well, they, they, they sell it to you in a different way. Uh, they might, they, they'll have like testimonials and things like that. They'll say like, oh, here's the list of people that, that got hired on, at company XYZ. And we have, um, we have some percentage of, uh, uh, of our students that get hired. At, at jobs, or there's even some options that um, where you you're not obligated to pay them. Uh, at least I think you're not obligated to pay them. You're not obligated to pay them unless you get a job, and then they take like some percentage of of your future earnings for some period of time. Like, yeah, there's a lot of options that are growing out there and they're, they're targeted at these people that are just coming out of college and, and they, they're not ready to solve the problem of how do I know what to learn to, to get to where I want to go. 
Um, and of course, there, it's not as if even if you knew that information, you could just find it all in one place. Like inevitably, you're going to have to go to a lot of different sources. You might actually have to have to get a book um, in some cases. And then what happens if you reach a point where you're, you're like stumped on something? Who are you going to... Um, because, I mean, especially if you're plotting your own course, your own like unique uh, course through the material that, and, and not necessarily, it's, it's something that not necessarily, there's not someone available who's done it before, then where are you going to get the help you need when inevitably you reach some point where you're stuck? Right? So these are all problems that are facing people that, that would decide to look for some alternative to college. And I think in a lot of cases, people will still encounter these, these, this like crisis of motivation where they're not, where they're not sure they're, they're doing the right things and they're not sure they're, they're even going to enjoy the, the job that they end up with. Um, and I, I don't know, I, I will, I have some ideas about what to say to that, but I don't, I don't think that whatever solution I might be thinking of, I don't think that that's an easy solution. It's not something that I can just say, um, in, in a matter of seconds, you know, it's, uh, it's, I think the ideal solution to that problem, to the problem of getting educated for a job for, for, or for some group of jobs that you're interested in, I don't think that that problem has the, has a very good solution right now. Um, if you, if you, if you believe what I've described and I, I mean, I, I, I don't have any statistics to back up what I've said, but uh, if you believe what I've said and if you've, go, if you've gone through what I've gone through, then I think you would be, you'd be fairly convinced as I am um, that college is not the ideal solution for that problem. And I think that's where I'll end the video.